friends, this is Michelle Gans and the Don't Say That Challenge, 40 Days of Fasting from Wrong Thinking and Wrong Speaking. I am so glad that you are here. I am thrilled that we are at day 30. Can you believe it? It's already day 30. The thought that we are fasting from today is, what's wrong with me? Let me just tell you that there's nothing wrong with you. Okay, let me just say that first. And I believe that our fast from wrong thinking is working. I want you to stay on this journey with me. These seeds will produce the great harvest you've always wanted and needed for every area of your life. And we're starting with today, you know, that there's nothing wrong with you. I don't want you to even think that there's something wrong with you. The constant awareness of our falling short, so to speak, is where the devil and religion wants to keep us sometimes. It keeps us defeated and hemmed in by shame rather than being liberated through divine nature, right? You know, Second Peter 1 and 4 says, through his promises, we share in the divine nature of God and escape the corruption that's in the world through lust, okay? Nothing wrong with you. You know how I do. I'm always like, we're gonna switch it up. So how can we look at this thought and eliminate it and put something else in our mind? So first, understand the gift of righteousness, okay? Second Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we would be made the righteousness of God. This is the greatest exchange in human history ever. Jesus took our sinfulness and imparted it to us, his righteousness, which means that we are right in God's eyes, not wrong. You see, sometimes we look at ourselves and we're like, you know, dang, what's wrong with me? Why did I say that? What's wrong with me? Why did I do that? What's wrong with me? How come I, you know, couldn't get that job or how come I couldn't do take on that role or take on, you know, any number of things. There's certain reasons and things and thoughts that we say that make us feel like we aren't enough or, you know, there's something wrong with us. But the truth is there's nothing wrong with you. You were made to be the righteousness of God. God said it. Not us, not me, not you. But God said that you are the righteousness of God. He gave the exchange. You know, and so just accept it, believe in it, trust that and awake to righteousness. First Corinthians 15, 34 says, awaken to the righteousness and you will not sin. When God thinks of you, he thinks of a victorious, conquering, strong, powerful, wise and holy son or daughter. He sees you as a mighty champion, the head, remember, and not the tail. Righteousness means to stand in his presence without a sense of guilt, shame, inferiority, or condemnation. When you're the righteousness of God, it's not saying that you making wrong right, because that's definitely not we're saying what we're saying. But when you accept that you're the righteousness of God, it allows you, it calls you, it pushes and propels you to do right, to be right, to act right. When we're doing that, there's no way it's impossible for us to feel like there's something wrong with us. So I want you to step into that and reject sin consciousness all the time. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When you're always conscious of what's wrong with you, you will do wrong. You know, when you just when you're always talking about just the sin, the sin culture, the sin nature, the sin, the sin, the sin, if that's all you are aware of. You don't you never even think about the concept of righteousness or think about love. Think about the greatness that you are and can be in Christ. And when you think on those things that are above, you start to operate and live out of that above life, that above thinking, that above doing. And you're not down with the wrong and doing wrong because it's not in your heart. It's not in your mind. You're not speaking it and thinking it and thinking it and speaking it and doing stuff and being crazy. You know, you got to sometimes some of the bad stuff that we see on television or even on the news. Sometimes when when that's all that we consume, then we become what we consume. So I'm just telling you, consume the goodness of God. Consume the great things that he has and puts before us. Accept that. And when you do, you'll start seeing better things in your life and you won't look at yourself or other people as always wrong. You start looking at things that are right. You'll see the things that are right, right? And ask the Holy Spirit to do what he does best. 
First Corinthians 2.12 says, We have to receive the Spirit of God so that we know the things freely given to us by God. A key ministry of the Holy Spirit is to reveal what is already yours. Not to reveal to you all that is wrong in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you the good stuff in your life. The great things that you're grateful for. The things that you have done well. The things that you have done despite impossibilities you may have faced. Okay? When you change the way you think, I'm telling you, you change the way your life looks. You change the way you feel. You change the way sickness and, and craziness can come upon you just by taking your thought life up a higher level. That's why we're doing this. This is day 30. Get it and get it good. And so dwell on what's right more than you dwell on what's wrong. Go through the scripture, reading who you are in Christ, what's yours in Christ, what you can do in Christ. It's staggering. You wouldn't believe it. It's going to flood your mind with this new way of thinking. I'm telling you, you're going to feel different. You're going to feel bold. You're going to feel love. You're going to feel cared for. You're going to feel right. And you're not going to feel like there is anything wrong with you. All right. So here we go. We're going to think this and speak that. I am the righteousness of God through the blood of Jesus. I stand in the presence of God without guilt, shame, inferiority or condemnation. I awake to righteousness and I believe it will lead me to a victorious life. I am a joint heir with Jesus. When God looks at me, he sees his blood. He thinks of me as a conquering, powerful and holy son or daughter. I will not think of myself as anything less or more than what God thinks of me in Jesus name. I love you all. I am so glad that you have been here today. This is the Don't Say That Challenge, 40 Days of Fasting from Wrong Thinking and Wrong Speaking. I look forward to seeing you here tomorrow.